For today's video, I did a bit of shopping on AliExpress for what is essentially the fake Louis Vuitton handbag of handheld gaming consoles. And it's led me to the point where I kind of feel like I need to make a bit of a legal disclaimer at the beginning of this video in case Nintendo's lawyers are watching. Intellectual property theft is very naughty, and you shouldn't buy knockoff versions of things on AliExpress, even if it doesn't explicitly use the associated brand names to try and scam people into buying it, it's still a mean thing to do. So in other words, Nintendo, please don't let your legal team feed me to that huge Cthulhu creature that they use to settle legal disputes. And here it is, in a package that looks suspiciously like an obscene amount of narcotics, is the, the walking lawsuit of a console. It's very professionally packaged, so let's, let's open it up and see what this console actually looks like. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna get into this, maybe, maybe like this. That actually has a proper box, look at that, we've got a Pow Kitty X2 in here. Now, as you can see here, we can actually choose between different versions of it. Apparently, I didn't have a choice on the website, but you can either get an 8, a 16, or a 32 gig version. I'm curious to see what I'm gonna get. Okay, and straight through the plastic, you can see that someone's clearly been copying Nintendo's homework. Let's, let's take that out and then see... Oh, we can actually just take the whole thing out and then see what else it comes with in the box. So under here, you've got some, some Pow Kitty literature. Uh, there's a, what looks like a warranty? Yeah, there's a warranty card, so that seems very professional. And then there's a charging cable for it. Okay, there we go. It, again, it's, it's gonna be very difficult for them to argue that this isn't aping the Nintendo Switch in some way. It is very plasticky feeling, and one of the first things that you'll notice is that these Joy-Cons or whatever, they don't actually come off. There is a little line separating them from the chassis, but let's actually bring an actual Switch in here and compare them. They are very, very similar. Although, if anything, the Pow Kitty actually has a bigger display. The controller layout is pretty much identical, although you don't have the, the L2 and R2 buttons, like the shoulder triggers you don't have here. And you can actually plug two controllers in here, so you can do like multiplayer stuff with it. It's, again, it has to be wired with micro USB. On the other side, you have a power button and a volume rocker, which looks, again, pretty much identical to the, the actual Switch's power button and volume rocker. And then you've got a SD card slot, which, let's see what size we got here. Uh, we got the 32 gig version, that's exciting. And then you've got an HDMI port. So you can actually plug this into your TV, although it's a significantly less sleek implementation than the Switch's. And then you've also got a headphone jack, again, like you do on the Switch. You don't actually have a game cartridge place for this console. That's because it doesn't have some cracked version of the Switch OS on here. I think the most recent emulator you can run on this little console is PS1. So I'm curious to see what games it actually comes with. Oh, it's a fingerprint magnet. So when you put these two consoles side by side, it's clear that the only reason that Pow Kitty can actually get away with selling this low quality knockoff is because China feels the same about intellectual property theft as like an anti-vaxxer feels about any form of scientific research. So now let's power up this definitely not a switch and see see what kind of gaming experience we get from it. Now another way that you can tell, oh there we go, Pow Kitty. I mean that's pretty cute. They, they've got a decent logo designer. Oh there we go, what an OS. Now in all honesty, the display is actually surprisingly good for a device that cost about $80. Here are the actual emulators that you can use on this definitely not a Switch. And there is 11 of them. As far as I know, you can't add more, but you've got a pretty decent selection here. Uh, let's see what games it comes with. Now you can actually add more games to the little not a Switch. Uh, they give you a breakdown on how to do that on the actual AliExpress product listing, but it does look 
surprisingly complicated. I'm not tech savvy enough to do that. Now, while we wait for the intro cinematic for Taken 3 to finish, the first thing that you notice when using this Nodder Switch to game is this button layout, and it's really irritating. Now, more seasoned Switch users will immediately see the issue here. These buttons are the wrong way around. As you can see on the Switch, it's A, B, X, Y. Here it's B, A, X, Y. And the buttons still have the same use as they do on the Switch, so you keep pressing the wrong thing and it's, it's very irritating. And then other than that, these little joysticks are horrendous. They feel terrible. Uh, they're very sticky and they're not precise. And as you can see, look at that. Oh yeah, look at that build quality. Does that just... No, it doesn't just pop off. But anyway, we'll have a look inside the console. We'll do a bit of a tear down later. Okay, I, I, I accidentally chose this lady, but that doesn't matter. I'm still gonna take Jin down. It runs Taken very well. Like, the frame rate's good. There aren't any real frame drops or anything. It, it feels really smooth and quick. No! Oh! Oh, there we go. That was, that was very close. <laughs> Actually, that was surprisingly close. All in all, the gaming experience on this is possible. I mean, I guess it's kind of what you'd expect from an $80 console. Although, I do have to admit, the display is surprisingly good. Yeah, honestly, it's not that far off. Although, comparing the build quality of the POW Kitty to the Switch is like comparing you to the guy she tells you not to worry about. So with that, let's try and plug this into a TV and see what kind of gaming experience we get with this very definitely not a Switch. You can see that it's not really as sleek an implementation as the Switches, which this, again, definitely isn't based on. But anyway, let's see how this handles TV gaming. Okay, I don't know how well this is picking up on camera, but <laughs> there's no resolution scaling, so it looks, it looks absolutely horrendous. But let's try a game and see how a PS1 game runs on this TV. Ooh! Look at that detail. Let's try, let's try Taken 3 again, because, you know, we know how it runs. So, I mean, it's a PS1 port, right? So it looks exactly how I can imagine it would look if you just plug your PS1 into a 4K TV. The quality is really not amazing. There's no upscaling or anything happening. Uh, but, you know, the frame rates are good and it's perfectly playable. It's a bit weird having this dangling HDMI cable off here. And if you're like me and you rage quit while playing games, uh, I'm sure this is gonna cause some damage. Yeah, Nina, don't mess- Oh, did she just spit at me? So yeah, I mean, we've got some original Super Mario running here, and as far as, like, you know, classic game ROM-playing hardware goes, this isn't the worst implementation ever. I mean, I know that I'm, like, not legally allowed to say that, but it's not terrible. Although, the controller is really terrible, and considering the fact that you have to use micro USB to connect the controller to this, you're gonna have to specifically look for a controller that is compatible with it. But so see, as you can see, the controls are really sticky, and it's really difficult to... It's really difficult to get precise movements and stuff down, you know? Now comes the best bit. Let's open it up and see what the little POW kitty looks like inside. And I'm also gonna see if I can actually do the entire teardown without breaking the little silicon implant console. So place your bets now if you think I can actually pull it off. Oh, oh that sounds so unconsensual. But there we go. We've lost a couple of the buttons, but that's not a big deal. And this is just the back of a PCB. It's actually not that interesting. Although the battery is 3,500 milliamp hours, which is surprisingly big for a device like this. And the battery life's been decent for the bit of use that I've, that I've gotten out of it. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, there's not much going on here. We do have the backs of the D-pads here. And then we've got the two speakers that are actually soldered onto the PCB. So is the battery. Uh, and then finally we have a ribbon cable connecting the USB ports for controllers and charging, and then a ribbon cable for the actual display. Now the other side of the PCB should be more interesting because that's where all the stuff is.
After you've unscrewed the PCB and you try and actually lift it up, it's still stuck down because it's stuck on these little joysticks, which you can kind of just pull out like that and then you get easier access to the actual PCB. So now I just need to undo these two ribbon cables and then I should be able to lift it off. I don't actually want to remove the battery because it's glued down pretty tight to the back of the display and I don't want to accidentally break the display or anything like that. So we're not going to have amazing access to the other side of the PCB, but we should be able to see what's going on. This is a fairly basic PCB. They would definitely have had to custom make it, but I don't know how hard that actually would have been. Uh, this rock chip seems like it's the actual processor for this little console. Now, according to the AliExpress listing, it's a quad core 1.7 gigahertz chip, uh, which is pretty powerful for PS1 games, which is like the most uh, recent emulator on this little console. And then down here, you've got a little Nunya chip. Now, Nunya is like a DRAM and NAND flash manufacturer. And after a quick Google, that chip seems to be a four gig module of DDR3, which again, for PS1 games, this thing is, is pretty overpowered for, for what they're doing with it. So after that quick look at the inside of this little console, I'm gonna try and reassemble it. And I really hope that I can get it working again. Um, I think that's going to be the ultimate challenge. So let's let's see how this goes. For those of you that bet against me and said that I was going to break the little pow kitty in the process of disassembling it and reassembling it, you are 100% wrong because it's still working perfectly. I did an entire video with it that involved a teardown and I didn't break it. So I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty chuffed with myself. That went very well. I mean, there was a brief moment where I thought that I broke it, but it's as you can see here, it is still perfectly functioning. In fact, let me let me just do this. Look at that, look at that, I have reassembled it. Now, I obviously could easily have filmed this before the teardown, but I don't plan my videos at all, so that's definitely not what I did. And with that, it brings me to the end of the video. So now, I'm gonna take this little pow kitty and go punish it appropriately because it's been so naughty and clearly copying its design homework from Nintendo. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. I recently launched a page and it'll help me a lot to buy more crap like this to do interesting videos on. And yes, check out any other social media you're interested in, linked in the description below. And until the next video, bye bye And again, Nintendo, please don't sue me.